we have 2.0 and 2.1. In 2.0, we did not support fiber channel zoning. In 2.1, we do support fiber channel zoning. Now the problem with this is, hey, assume that we have a setup that looks like this. So we have our, the reason to run fiber channel zoning in the fabric interconnect is first of all, when running in switch mode, so running fiber channel switch mode, not running NPV mode because NPV doesn't care about zoning because it just forwards all its packets out towards the network. Then the second reason is if I'm running appliances. So directly connected storage appliances on the fabric interconnect that my servers can use locally. So these are my two reasons to run fiber channel zoning in the first place. As I said in 2.0, when I ran switch mode, the system learned the zoning database out of the network. But of course for appliances that doesn't, that doesn't, that, that's not applying. So this is only required for uh, running in switch mode. No FC zoning, but learning in uh, switch mode. The appliances relied on what's called default zoning. Default zoning means everybody can talk to each other or nobody can talk to each other. The default is of course nobody. That is what default zoning is by default set to. But on the UCS, because I'm relying on that zoning connectivity, I set default zoning to what's called permit. So it's by default, all communication is permitted through the entire system. Now in 2.1, we have a strict change. So FC zoning is now supported. I still learn zones in switch mode. So that didn't change. And that's actually also the recommended approach uh, because I have much more control over my zoning in the fabric than when I do it on the UCS. I can do it a combination of the two. I would highly recommend if you're doing this in the lab, run your FC zoning on the uh, network itself. So on the MDS switch itself. And then let, or unless it's very stated that you need to do zoning on the UCS, of course. Because UCS zoning does not allow initiator to target mapping, uh, which is not in the system. I need to have at least one host in the zone in the system, meaning a blade or a server. Meaning that that has to do with how I apply it. So I will show you that in a minute. So we now support FC zoning, but we do not support default zoning anymore. The appliances in 2.0 rely on default zoning, but as soon as you upgrade to 2.1, that's not supported anymore. But in this release, I cannot configure my zones, and in this release, I have to configure my zones. So what happens during the upgrade? Outage. Easy situation, it's, it's gonna cause outage. No default zoning, so I have to define zones when zoning appliances and blades together. So how does it work? As I said, I can only zone together devices which are in the system. Uh, at least initiators need to be in the system, with meaning hosts, blades in the system, though they can be zoned together in the UCS. So how does that look on a configuration perspective? Now, this connectivity is using what's called storage connection policies. So you start looking for zoning stuff and zones, fire original zones, you never find that. All I find is storage connection policies. What I can do here, what I can specify here. So my storage connection policy, what do I define here? I define here a number of things. So I define here my NetApp array. That's what I want to do. So this is my NetApp connection. Just give it a name, oh, too long, connect. 
Then I need to specify the zoning type. I can specify three things here. And the best way to remember that is by just clicking the help button. By the way, this help button is also available in the lab. So if you're, if you're stuck at some point and you want to have some documentation about it, the help button in the UCS manager is just available to you. And that will open up this web page that is available because this web page is hosted on the Fabric Interconnect. As you see, this IP address is the IP address of my Fabric Interconnect. So this is very useful during the lab because it immediately shows you exactly what you want to know. So the zoning type field is a very funny one. The none says do not configure fiber channel zoning. So I do not know why this option is there, but because I'm configuring this because I want to do zoning, right? Uh, and then we have two options. So we have single initiator, single target, or single initiator, multiple targets. What does that mean? If I go back to my drawing page, normally in zoning configurations, it is advised or it's recommended to do initiator to target zoning. Meaning if I specify a zone, I specify the port worldwide name of the initiator, and I specify the port worldwide name of the target. So these two can talk to each other because everything that I define in a zone can talk to each other. So if I uh, assign a third port worldwide name, all three of them can talk to each other. So what is recommended? Build a separate zone for each initiator and each target. Now it could be that the target is always the same. Like I said, storage systems like my NetApp array, like on my Nexus 5K here, um, I'm zoning everything together with the same NetApp box. That 810060, that same box is gonna be is zoned together with all my blades. Why is that? Well, my NetApp array will recognize exactly based on the source port worldwide name what kind of system is trying to log in and it will serve the data accordingly. So that's just an intelligent storage system. So zones, initiator target, initiator target, these two can talk to each other. So this is what they call syst zoning, single initiator, single target zoning. This is of course uh, going to consume a lot of zones. There is a limit in the amount of zones that I can create. That limit is found here on the fabric interconnect. I can say fiber channel zone count, my zone limit is 8,000. Now these are, that, that's a lot of zones, right? <laughs> that's a lot of ports and targets that I need to match. Still, there are situations where you would run into this situation. If I already have a little bit bigger fiber channel network, that would mean that I'm already running hundreds or maybe thousands of zones already, and I'm adding these zones to it. So this is just a yeah, difficult situation. Do I run into that uh, limitation or not? And otherwise, there, is, there are other ways to work around that limitation, I think. But Cisco said, what we, what we can also do is something we call SIMT zoning. So a single initiator, multiple target zoning. What I do there is I still take the same initiator because again, I do not want servers to talk to each other. I do not want blade number one and blade number two to communicate to each other across the fiber channel network. Technically, that's not even possible, but they, you can run an IP connection across fiber channel technically, and then run an IP connection on the fiber channel network. So that could be a potential breach, a security breach. Now I just allow storage traffic towards the server, or towards the disk. What I do now is I configure multiple targets in the same zone. So this server has access to this target, to that target, and to that target. Of course, the targets also have connectivity to each other. 
but they don't really send data to each other. Disks to disks, that connectivity does not exist or that, that communication does not exist. It's the initiators that I want to have secured. This is only used when your zone count is getting critical. But usually this cyst zoning is the one that you're looking for. Again, how do I configure that? I start a storage connectivity connection policy and I say NetApp. I say I'm doing syst zoning and I'm going to specify which vSAN it is in. Is it running Fabric A or Fabric B? Well, I'm running Fabric A right now. I'm going to give it a description of this is my NetApp array. Take a look at the uh, port worldwide name. This is my NetApp, the port worldwide name of my NetApp. And I copy and paste that port worldwide name. Like I said, I copy and I cannot copy paste. So it is 50A098000 BE EB41. This is my uh, port worldwide name that I'm using. So for some reason I cannot copy and paste it, but that's okay. So my NetApp array is on Fabric A and I'm okay. Now I'm not done because I only set the target here. How do I match the initiator in this case? That is done in the service profile. So here in my service profile template, on the storage tab, I have what's called VHBA initiator groups. And for some reason I cannot do that here. Oh, here it is. Plus. The VHBA initiator groups let me test this out if I'm right here. Because this is different. No, this is not what I'm looking for. Let me create a new service profile template and say this is my test2 template. Use a UUID. Networking, I'm okay with that. Storage, I use my SAN connectivity co policy. And now I can start selecting zoning. So according to my storage section, I configure two VHBAs based on the SAN connectivity policy. And after that, I can start configuring zoning. Now, you can see here that the switch is running in Entos mode, and then the zoning configuration is not applied unless you're running uh, appliance ports. So, what do I do here? I select uh, an initiator. Why can't I create an initiator group? Ah, I need to create some. Ah, there we go. Because I'm using a storage 
a SAN connectivity policy, I cannot, I cannot do the zoning. So that might limit me here as well. There we go. This is my zoning. So as you saw, I had the tab called zoning, but this initiator group window is doing the exact same thing. This is my Fire Channel zoning. So again, it does not say zoning. It only says zoning when creating a new service profile template. But now I say this is zone one, for example. And I say my VHBA for Fabric A is gonna be zoned together with my NetApp. And that NetApp says this port worldwide name. So this is gonna zone VHBA A together with this particular NetApp array. Done. And that zoned it together. And that's immediately gonna be applied as well. Zone one is configured. So let's check that on the CLI. Now, because I'm running an MPV mode, it didn't allow this. So I'm not gonna see that right now in the CLI because I'm running an MPV mode. I, I will need to switch to switch mode to show you that. What I can do if I'm running appliances on my Fabric Interconnect, and I'm running an uplink to my network, what is usually done is uh, running a separate vSAN just for my appliances. So then my uplink connectivity has no issue in connecting to some storage array, and then the appliances are connecting to a different vSAN so I can do all things there. To allow zoning or to allow connectivity for those appliances, I will need to enable zoning here on the vSAN itself. So I enabled zoning now, so I'm pretty surprised what it will do. No, it's not gonna show anything. It's not going to show the zoning because we are running uh, NPV mode still. So I can enable that storage connection policy here by allowing that NetApp target to be configured. Then to make that initiator to target mapping, I do that under the service profile or the service profile template using these VHBA initiator groups. And in that initiator groups, I just say this VHBA or this initiator with this worldwide port name needs to be zoned to that worldwide port name. And because I'm running NPV mode, I cannot do this. And because I'm not running appliances, I cannot do this right now. But this is the idea of how to configure zoning. So this is not probably not going to be in the lab because they will... Uh, they will be, they want you to configure this using the MDS switch because you can do much more features using the MDS switch for this. And these are basically the changes or the major changes in UCS 2.1.